Please and Moana. Today we'll talk about uh, gratitude. It's a very beautiful word. We are expecting all the time that other people they will say thank you to us. But how many times we are thankful to people? Most of the time people they find it very difficult to say thank you. The beauty of this country is that uh, children they are learning all these things in the schools. Thank you, sorry, it's a very uh, common word. In the Bible, we learn that God is expecting from His people they need to be thankful to God. In our introduction, we will try to focus upon the story of Naaman. I personally had that experience of the people, those who are living in the, that kind of the condition of leprosy. In my native city, in uh, Rawalpindi, the twin city, Islamabad and Rawalpindi, the capital of Pakistan, there are two hospitals, leprosy hospitals. And one hospital was very close to our house, you can say, or next door. Most of the time we were playing in that ground of the hospital and we were observing the people, those who were uh, victim of that leprosy. They were covering their hands, their mouth, and they were very vulnerable. Our parents, they were so strict, they said, no, you shouldn't go there. Because it's very dangerous disease. Nowadays, thanks God, um, some people, they, they are victim of that uh, leprosy, particularly in uh, developed countries in India and Pakistan and some other part of the world. Leprosy actually started in uh, Egypt when they buried the mummies. Do you know about mummies? Who knows that? Yes, Annie, what's that? Yeah. Thank you, Vedant. Thank you very much. They preserved the dead bodies and they laid them in the paramites. Uh, and uh, people they caught that uh, disease, bacteria from Egypt, from these mummies. And uh, it became very dangerous disease, particularly in uh, some part of India, where the people they lost their limbs, you know. It is, it is uh, working under your uh, skin and the skin is becoming senseless then slowly that bacteria is going into that uh, bone marrow people they lost their eyes and uh, thumbs and they are becoming uh, senseless you know sometimes uh, the mouse they are beating and eating their uh, faces or other limbs and they, people they don't uh, know that they become so senseless the people, those who were living with this kind of the disease, with the leprosy at the time of Jesus, they were living in the caves, they used to live away from the cities. People, they don't want to have any contact with them. And in the story of Naaman, he was a, a great leader, but he was hiding his leprosy. And when, I will cut the story short, we just heard that story. When he received that healing from the man of God, and uh, we can see for the sake of healing, we need to be very persistent. He asked him to dip seven times in that river Jordan. The Jordan River is not very clean. And he was murmuring and complaining, why I should go into that river Jordan? He was looking the beautiful rivers around there. But when he gave it the water seven times, he healed. And uh, in response to Thanksgiving, he offered some money. But the prophets, he refused to take that. So we need to understand that gratitude, Thanksgiving is very important. Later in our gospel reading, we will try to focus upon the other leprosies. But in this time, I just want to remind you 
how we can give him thanks. The different ways and means. We can give thanks to God through praise and worship. When we are coming to church, we are singing hymns and psalms. So we are giving thanks to God. Psalm 9 verse 11. Sing praises to the Lord. Enthroned in Zion. Proclaim among the nation what he has done. So we need to proclaim what God has done for us. In Psalm 111, just we uh, study that uh, Psalm, we, we understand that God is our provider. We need to give Him thanks with musical instruments as we are playing drums and traveling and harmonium and keyboard. So through instruments, in our singing, we need to give Him thanks. In Psalm 32, uh, 33, verse 2, praise the Lord with Har made music to him on the ten stringed layer. King David he used to play the instruments and he was giving glory to God. So not only in one place, not only in this church, but we need to give him thanks universally. Wherever people they are worshiping the Lord, they need to give him uh, uh, glory. Psalm 67 verse 3. May the people praise you, O God. May all the people praise you. Then Isaiah 42 verse 12, let them give glory to the Lord and proclaim His praise in the islands. Islands, not only in one place. Throughout the world, people they need to praise Him and give Him glory through singing, through worshipping, through prayer, the different parts of the prayer. In first part, you, you need to give Him thanks. In the second phase of your prayer, you need to pray for other people, pray for intercession. And in the ending, you need to give that prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. So these are the different uh, uh, phases of the prayer, part of the prayer. So we need to give Him thanks through singing, through musical instrument, universally, and all the time. Not only one hour, not only ten minutes. There's a beautiful book, Power in Praise. If you have a chance, you must read that book. Power in praise. This is a this is a power in praise and worship. When people they used to worship in the temple and uh, people they, they couldn't stand. There was a very powerful anointing. So many times when we are praising and worshiping, we are clapping. Now people they are sometimes feel the shame. Oh, we shouldn't clap. All the other people will think about that. Then you can raise your hands. You can praise him. You can worship him. Can't like that because you know when you are praising and worshiping, whatever is inside. You are showing outside, you are inside faith, you are showing that faith to God. You are telling people that He is God, He is great, He is Almighty, He is worthy of praise and honor. So public, they should know that we are the worshipper. Worship, praise and worship. In the Bible, especially in the New Testament, we have seen that uh, Jesus done so many miracles. These miracles have special meanings. Not only these few miracles, which we may, uh, we read that in the New Testament, but he done so many other miracles. There is no record of all these miracles. The Bible says it will uh, record all these miracles. There will be no place for uh, the books in this world. So Jesus healed the people, that was his uh, uh, part of the ministry, preaching, healing. So Jesus healed the people. In this uh, story of uh, healing, it's a parable as well. In this story, there are three subjects, salvation, thanksgiving and faith. At this limited time, I would like to talk about these three points. First of all, we can see the power of His healing and the understanding of the people about Jesus Christ, who He is. When Jesus was moving towards His destination, we can see that now on His way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. It's the south side of Jerusalem. 
I just was moving these lepers they were fully aware that Jesus healing the people and they start shouting as he was going into village ten men who had leprosy met him they stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice Jesus master have pity on us so they were fully aware that it is a crime to touch the Jewish when they are having the problem with the leprosy they were afraid they were looking on Jesus from the distance but you can see the power and the love of our Savior Lord Jesus Christ their, their concept was very limited if you see that they call him master Jesus master have pity on us so they were calling him they were seeking the mercy from Jesus Jesus is so merciful when he saw them he said go show yourself to the priest and as they went they were cleansed try to focus upon these verses they didn't receive healing there and then but Jesus was expecting them to go and show yourself to the priest so in the second point about the faith and the power of his healing the Bible says that they were on the way they were healed so they have received that healing in their mind it was a great risk going to see the priest the health officer they were issuing the certificate that now they are healed and they can move around they can go to the temple they can go to the relatives but before they went to see the priest or the uh, health, set, health officer they have received that healing because they were obedient to him we read that also in the story of Naaman because he was a bit hesitant not going to the water but later we can see the obedience of this Naaman and he had received that healing in this story we can we can see that they, they they became obedient to Christ and they start moving towards the temple and they get healed when he saw them he said go show yourself to the priest they receive that healing in their mind before they have the physical healing so we we can see that there are two kind of the disease or the leprosy one which is visible they were visibly having such disease it was quite visible because they were having the white spot on their bodies they were covering their face because of the danger but there was another disease because people they are carrying even in this 21st century as I said by the grace of God they found that treatment of this leprosy some millions of people they are uh, still victim of that leprosy but uh, still there is a, a cure of that uh, disease but if I say that people they are having such leprosy inside of them it is not visible but there are people around us and uh, when they went only one person came back there were ten people and you know the Bible says the person who came back he was not Jew he was cement segregated away from the other Jewish people there was a discrimination a racial discrimination because they were mixed race but that attitude of this Samaritan you can see full with a gratitude he came to see Jesus one of them he saw he was healed came back praising God in a loud voice he threw himself at Jesus feet and thanked him and he was Samaritan when I was meditating upon this text I was thinking why he didn't go to the temple because there was 
no presence of God at that time in the temple. There was no Shankaina and the glory in the temple. It was just a building. Because due to the sin of Israelites, there was no more praise and worship. There was no more presence of the God in the temple. It was like a business center where people, they were just going selling and buying animals. They were offering the sacrifice. That's why Jesus said that the time will come when people they will not worship in this temple. That's why. That's Samaritan. He was fully aware that Jesus Christ is a true temple. He is worthy of praise and worship. He failed to go to that place in temple and he came to the true temple who was Jesus Christ. And he worshipped Jesus Christ. The Bible says he brought her before him. With a loud voice. There was no hesitation. There was no fear of the people. He was praising and worshipping. You can see the humility and the reverence of that man. Where were the other nine? Jesus was asking this question. Why did he come? There was a problem with the attitude. As I mentioned in my introduction, that there's a, there's a great difficulty with the human attitude. We are not giving him thanks for what he has done for us. These people, the rest of the nines, they were not Samaritans, they were Jew. So they believe that they are right because they are the children of Abraham. That is their right to have such salvation. They believe that it is right to enjoy the healing. They believe that promised Messiah, when he will come to this world, they will receive such healing and salvation. That is their right. In our community, sometimes we the Christian, we, we claim that oh, this is all right because we are Christian. But if there is no such humbleness, there is no such humility in us, we cannot enjoy this salvation. Only one out of ten he have received that salvation. They received the healing, but this one he have received that salvation. He is compassionate. His mercy is for everyone. His sun, moon, star, rain for everyone. People are enjoying the effect of that blessing. They are enjoying the effect of that grace. But the true believers, they are enjoying that relationship of that Heavenly Father. He came back with full of gratitude. But Jesus was not very pleased with the rest of the lines. He said, We are not what not all ten cleansed. Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Raise and go, your faith has made you well. Actually, there was a question about the rest of the nines. Just didn't say that why they came to me and they worship me and they praise me. The Bible freely said that. Was no one found to return and give praise to God? Jesus was not seeking his own glory. He was seeking the glory of his father. He was not being held arrogant. Oh, I heal them and they should come to me and worship me. Give me thanks. He was saying that give glory to God. Unfortunately, in our churches, in our society, there are physical healers. When they are healing someone, they are asking for money. They are asking their self praise. Come to me, give me thanks, give me money because I healed you. But this was not that sort of the mindset. He said they should come and praise to God. He is worthy of all the praise and honor. He was a perfect man and a perfect God. As a man, he was expecting from that rest of the nine, those who were Jews, come and worship the living God. There was a racial pride in their mind. But that Samaritan, he was such a humble person, he came to him. He didn't go to his relative, his friends, his brothers and sisters. Look, I'm here. Come and celebrate. No. 
He said, I'll go to my master. I'm going to see the healer. So the problem with the ingratitude, unthankfulness is not acceptable to God. What he has done for us. And you know, that in the last uh, verse, then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. You can say that uh, uh, they, they have received the healing, the rest of the nine, and this person as well. Why Jesus was saying on that spot, made you well, your faith has made you well. In fact, Jesus was talking about the spiritual healing and said, rest of the nine, they have received the physical healing. They cured from their leprosy, but there was a leprosy inside of them. But this Samaritan, he not only physically healed, but he was spiritually healed as well. This was very important. It's very crucial for all of us. Spiritual healing. Heart with full of gratitude. We need to give him thanks what he has done for us. We don't need to be arrogant and pride. Don't claim your salvation. It's not our right. You know what is the grace? Grace is a favor of God. We were not worthy for that grace. The grace is a favor of God. You shouldn't claim that. We need to ask for it. We need to request for that grace. It's not our right. This is a great, great, great grace of God. We were not worthy of that. So we need to give Him thanks for His power of healing. We need to give Him thanks that He's always with us, helping us in our situation, in our difficulties. But what he's expecting to respond to that, we need to give him thanks. Let us give him thanks. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Loving God, Heavenly Father.